Good morning. Good morning. Funny, isn't it? Funny, isn't it? Thank Apparat. you very much for that. Apparat. Very warm welcome. Apparat. Um, how things have Apparat. changed. Apparat. Second, second, please. Colleagues and colleagues. Eine große Qualität der Demokratie ist, dass man auch denen zuhört, deren Meinung man nicht teilt. Well, thank you, Mr. Schultz. Isn't it funny? You know, when I came here 17 years ago and I said that I wanted to lead a campaign to get Britain to leave the European Union, you all laughed at me. Well, I have to say, you're not laughing now, are you? And the reason you're so upset, the reason you're so angry, has been perfectly clear from all the angry exchanges this morning. You, as a political project, are in denial. You're in denial that your currency is failing. You're in denial... Well, just, well, just look at the Mediterranean. No, 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 as a... As a policy to impose poverty on Greece and the rest of the Mediterranean, you've done very well. And you're in denial over Mrs. Merkel, Mrs. Merkel's call last year for as many, any people as possible to cross the Mediterranean into the European Union has led to massive divisions between countries and within countries. But the biggest problem you've got and the reason, the main reason the United Kingdom voted the way that it did is you have, by stealth, by deception without ever telling the truth to the British or the rest of the peoples of Europe, you have imposed upon them a political union. You've imposed upon them a political union. And when the people in 2005 in the Netherlands and France voted against that political union, when they rejected the Constitution, you simply ignored them and brought the Lisbon Treaty in through the back door. What happened? what happened last Thursday was a remarkable result. It was indeed a seismic result, not just for British politics, for European politics, but perhaps even for global politics too. Because what the little people did, what the ordinary people did, what the people who, who have been oppressed over the last few years and seen their living standards go down, they rejected the multinationals. They rejected the merchant banks. They rejected big politics. And they said, actually, we want our country back. We want our fishing waters back. We want our borders back. We want to be an independent, self-governing, normal nation. And that is what we have done. And that is what must happen. And in doing so, and in doing so we now offer a beacon of hope to Democrats across the rest of the European continent. I'll make one prediction this morning. The United Kingdom will not be the last member state to leave the European Union. So the question, the question is, what do we do next? Now, it is up to the British government to invoke Article 50. And I have to say that I don't think we should spend too long in doing it. I totally agree, uh, Mr Juncker, that the British people have voted. We need to make sure that it happens. But what I would like to see is a grown-up, and sensible attitude to how we negotiate a different relationship. Now, now I, know, I know that virtually none of you have ever done a proper job in your lives or worked, or worked in business or worked in trade or indeed ever created a job. But listen. Just listen.